have had trials and tribulation unexpected situation living here below I've had friends to turn their backs on me and leave me standing in the cold I've been hurt in the church as I attempt to do God's work by people who call themselves saints and many times I felt like giving up but the spirit said Glenda you came you know the Lord he'll put you through so many things where you just don't understand and for everything he allows there's a reason so in my life the devil gets my good you see God meant it for my good and without a doubt he brought me out I knew that he would and through it all God gets the glory everywhere I'll tell the story how God Devil meant it for bad, but I'm so glad God meant it for my good. Oh, the gossip, the lie, with tears in my eyes, have all worked out for my good. You see, I passed the test of. A tree by the water I stood and through it all God gets the glory cause everywhere I tell the story how God works things out just for me the devil meant it for bad but I'm so Tears in my eyes have all worked out for my good. I know no defeat. I am strong where I was weak. God gave me a song that helped me to carry on. The devil meant it for bad, but I'm so glad. God mean it, he meant it for my good, I know no defeat, I'm strong where I was weak, I know no defeat, I am strong where I was weak, the devil meant it for bad, but I'm 
Good morning, good morning, happy Sabbath. I am Alicia Brown Marcellin, and I'm here to welcome you all to our Zoom room and Facebook Live experience with our apostle, Dr. Glenda Phillips Lee of the International Gospel of the Church and the AACLA Commission. We have been blessed with ministries in Ghana, Kenya, Uganda, Ethiopia, Jamaica, South Africa, Nigeria, India, Korea, Cameroon, and Liberia. We ask that you guys please continue to meet us here on Wednesdays and Fridays at 3.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have our Sabbath services every Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And every Sunday morning is our Sunday worship service that is also 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. To begin our Sabbath service, I'll be reading from Exodus 20 verses 8 through 11 in the King James Version. It starts by reading, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, and it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. I now ask that you guys join me in prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much, God, for allowing us a day to wake up and seek your face, God. We know that this isn't something for us to take lightly because there are so many that were not able to wake up this morning, God. But we thank you that we're able to wake up, have sound mind, have mobility of our limbs, God. And we ask that as we commit this day into you, that you allow all things to work together for your good. We know that if we cast our cares upon you, that you will make sure that you come through for us, that all the things that we worry and care about and all of our concerns, God, that they will work together for our good. So we focus ourselves on you, God, and we ask that you have your way. God, the message that is to come forth, I pray that it will allow us to see ourselves differently, allow us to see each other differently, God, that it will allow us to move differently, God, that it will allow us to continue to see all the greatness that you have placed on the inside of us. God, I ask and pray that this message continues to have the same impact through and through. God, I pray for our apostle and I uphold her in this moment and I ask that you just allow all things to work together for her good, God. I pray that you continue to open the eyes of her understanding. God, allow her words to come through, come through straight from you, God. Allow them to be clear and allow them to speak to our very situations, God. We thank you for the words that you have left here for, left here for us as a man you God. And we ask that you would just continue to allow your angels to have charge over us and those that we care about. And God, all of those that are here, God, we pray that you allow us more opportunities to come together and be in your presence. And God, most importantly, we thank you for coming down and being here with us. We thank you for sitting in this space with us, God, and we ask that you have your way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Apostle, you can have the floor. Good morning, good morning, happy Sabbath. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice in, and we're glad in it. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for what he's doing. We thank God for what he's saying in this hour. I truly thank him for his grace and his mercy that he has allowed us the opportunity to not only fulfill our portion of responsibility, because sometimes we lag, sometimes we, we drag, sometimes we procrastinate to a point, amen, that it just seems um, to frustrate things more. But the grace of God is sufficient for us, amen. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm just grateful for this morning. I think I see um, Bishop Fountain on, bless God, hallelujah. I think I see... Um, some of my other friends coming on. We thank God for all of you who are joining. Please like and share. Amen. I believe that we're in a history, I mean, a season <clears throat> that I want to um, label according to the principle providential history. Amen. That's a season where things begin to repeat itself. And once things begin to repeat itself, if you've experienced that before or there's a record of it happening before, we should know how to respond. Amen. Hallelujah. And I believe today's um, teaching is going to help us to get the mindset 
to respond to the things that are taking place. The Bible says that there is nothing new under the sun. Amen. There's nothing new under the sun. So begin again to share, begin to like, amen, begin to subscribe, amen. I believe that there is a liberating word in the house, amen. Hallelujah. Father, we just praise you and we thank you. We give you all the glory again, oh God. This is the day that you have made. We're rejoicing and we're glad in it. We thank you that we even made it, oh God, to the Sabbath, a day of rest, a day of meditation, a day, oh God, that, Lord God, we can trust, oh Lord, that you, oh Father, is going to see us through. Hallelujah. You're going to see us through every situation, every circumstance. You're going to restore our strength. I believe today, oh God, for the strength being restored. I believe, oh God, that the crooked, even right now, because we are remembering and we're honoring you on this special day, oh God, Lord God, that the crooked is being made straight and the rough places are being made smooth. We thank you, oh God, that in this period of download and refreshing, oh Father, it's almost like updating. God, you're updating us on this Sabbath. That's it. The Sabbath is for an update. Amen. Hallelujah. That, that the things that you need to further this journey is available to you. So God, we thank you for updating us, oh Lord. We thank you, hallelujah, for giving us what we need, oh God, to finish and complete this journey. I bless God. I thank you, God, for all the nations, oh Father, that you have placed under, Lord God, my, my jurisdiction, oh Father. And I ask, oh God, that you make me, oh God, a true owner, oh Father, of these nations and these communities, Father, that Lord God, your will can be done, Father, and that the people that have an ear to hear will hear, oh Lord, what the Spirit is saying to the church. Father, I know, oh Father, in order for us to, Lord God, be successful, oh Father, that you have to raise up deliverers. You have to raise up, God, those in a messianic position, oh Father, the same as you raised up Jesus, who is our elder brother, and Lord God, you said the works that he did, oh God, we shall do also and greater works than these because you went to the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. So I thank God, hallelujah, that we're in this providential season, this season of restoration, this season, amen, that God is going to put us right. He's going to put us straight. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and it's up to you. It's up to you to uh, yield his will. It's up to you to um, <clears throat> say yes. Amen. It's up to you to identify who you are. Amen. A man, a woman that understands their original value. Amen. Hallelujah. There is no, um, there's no turning in that person. Amen a person that has come into the understanding and the knowledge of knowing who he or she is in God. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. There is, there is no limit, amen, to what that person can do. Man, hallelujah. God has called you, amen. He has chosen you. He has set you apart. You are anointed. You are appointed. You are approved by God. You know, Jeremiah thought, he couldn't do it, amen. He was. He thought that he was just a child, amen, that he wasn't equipped. And God had to tell Jeremiah, amen. He said, before I formed you in your mother's belly, I knew you, amen. And I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. When God's hand is on your life, there's nothing, nobody, or there's no situation that can prevent you from fulfilling that which God has ordained and called you to. Amen. Hallelujah. So we bless God. We give God glory that his will shall be done in the earth concerning your life. So now that the mind that was in Christ Jesus, that same mind, be that mind that's in you and I. Amen. So during this period, and we're going to read the word of God, 
during this period, amen, in providential history and determining, amen, the length, how long this season is going to last, a day is as a thousand years to the Lord, amen. One day is as a thousand years to the Lord. Amen. The moment you realize who you are in God, amen, I believe that is your troubles are over. I believe that the, the moment you come into understand, amen, that I am the true owner, owner of my situation, owner of my family, owner of my, my life, owner of owner of um, whatever it is that's before me. For example, we, we're, we're constantly um, being dictated to. We're constantly looking at our situation and feeling as though we don't have any control. Amen. I want you to know that all things, everything that you're in, everything that you're going through, that is working together for good. It's working for you a far greater weight of glory. Amen. You're just going through the process. Amen. You're just experiencing whatever it is that God has called you to experience to get you, God, I bless your name, to where you need to be. The problem is we fight it. Amen. Hallelujah. We're like Jacob and we're wrestling, but we're not we don't have the mindset that Jacob had. Jacob said, God, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let you go till you bless me. Amen. Hallelujah. But we wrestle. I'm not going to let you go until what, what I want done is done. No, the will of God is perfect. God already know what he's going to do. Amen. He's already purposed in his heart, Alicia, to bless you. Bishop Abune, God has already purpose in his heart to make you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You guys that are listening, Amen. it's time to rejoice. Amen. It's time to rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Hallelujah. For God is working this thing together. When we talk about this parallel history, amen, or this parallel providential season, amen, it's again a season or events that repeat themselves um, that maybe it happened during your grandparents' lifetime. Amen. During your great great grandparents' lifetime. Amen. But now it's happening during your lifetime. Like for me, I, my grandfather was a pastor. Amen. Then my mother became a pastor. Then here I am a pastor. Amen. Was it something that we could have done? It was it something that they could have done? Amen. To bring to bring about salvation for my family, for our nation, for our community. Amen. For the world. Amen. Was it a decision that could have been made? If y'all remember, the Bible says that in suffering, Jesus learned obedience. Amen. Hallelujah. He became, amen, hallelujah, the, the, the son of God, amen. And he took on this position because he was willing, amen. You must be willing, obedient. The sonship don't just happen. It happens through obedience and obedience is better than sacrifice. A question came across yesterday from some, one of my sons in Ghana Amen. And twin asked the question. He says, is obedience enough? Amen. And I began to reason and I answered him and I said, obedience is good because obedience is better than sacrifice. But character, amen, is also necessary. Y'all bless God. Amen. Character is necessary because it takes character, amen, to please God. Amen. Hallelujah. It takes you walking in a good character. Amen. Hallelujah. That you will have success because you're going to reap what you sow. Amen. Whatever you put yourself through or whatever you what and the Bible said, what comes from your, your heart. Amen. They're the issues of life. And that means what you're going through in life is because of the condition of your heart. So we need to search our hearts 
We need to search our minds. Amen. We need to think on things that are above and of a good report. Amen. That God can finish the work through us. Amen. <clears throat> Not lean into our own understanding because DeAndre, a lot of times, amen, Pastor DeAndre, a lot of times we get stuck in our own ideology, our own way of thinking. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and God wants our mind renewed that we can be like Jesus, the same mind that was in Christ Jesus and say yes to your will, God, and yes to your way, not my will, but thy will be done. And whatever we need to go through, Pastor uh, Bishop Abu, to get to that point, we need to do it by tearing down every stronghold, amen, bringing into captivity every thought that may separate us from God. Are y'all with me? Amen. So because we're in this season of parallel history where things are beginning to repeat itself and God is trying you to see if you're faithful, there's some causes. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and this cause is that the foundation for the Messiah, the foundation, amen, for the returning Christ, the foundation for the anointed one. How many know that you are anointed? Amen. And it's the anointing that destroys the yoke. Amen. Hallelujah. And God has put you in a position. Amen. Even in Navasha, uh, Bishop of Bude, to bring about deliverance for Navasha. He said, if I can find one righteous, I'll save that nation. Amen. Hallelujah. So if God can use you in Navasha, if God can use DeAndre in New York City, if God can use Amen. Okachuku in, in uh, <clears throat> excuse me, in Nigeria. Amen. If God could use Pastor Tia. Amen. Hallelujah. In Liberia and in South Korea. Amen. Hallelujah. If God could use Alicia. Amen. Here in Connecticut and New York City. Come on. God can, can move. Amen. He can move. Hallelujah. So it's, it's time now for us to Yield to God's will that the foundation of the Messiah is restored. Yes, the same Jesus is going to return one day, but there's going to have to be central figures, amen, Bless central families in place that's going to, it's almost like being in a football game. I love football, y'all. So being in a football game and you need players in, in, in strategic positions that's going to play the field. We can use basketball. You need your guards, right? You need your, your, your quarterbacks in football. Amen, Dre. Yeah, I almost got my games to our cross. Amen. Hallelujah. You need your pointers in both games, right? I'm calling them out from different ones, so don't think I have lost it for a minute. Amen. But in, in playing ball, you need your people in place. And that's what God is doing. That's why I was telling some people that even when it came to titles, amen, titles are gifts to the ministry, amen, and, and God strategically called people as, as apostles, pastors, preachers, teachers, evangelists, amen, ministries of helps, amen, for the working of the ministry, amen, that he, he can keep things in line according to his will. That's why it's important that we study, this is good this morning, that we study showing ourselves approved unto God, rightly dividing this word, not being ashamed, amen, hallelujah, not only of God, hallelujah, uh, but of the gospel of Jesus Christ, because we know that it is the power of God unto salvation. Y'all need to be sharing this word this morning. I feel the power of God, amen. So in order for us to Restore this foundation, amen, of the Messiah. There's factors. There's factors as far as our foundation of faith, amen. When we talk about the foundation of faith, we need to know where, what do you believe, amen, hallelujah. And in your beliefs, Pastor Bune, amen, where did you get this information from, amen? I was thinking over the last week or so, Amen. That there are um, perceptions. 
Amen. Each one of us have a perception of an idea. Where are you getting your information from? Amen. Are you in prayer? Are you in meditation? Did someone else tell you this? Did you read this for yourself through the word of God? Did God uh, give you revelations? Was it downloaded to you from heaven? Amen. All of that plays a factor in your success, in how you view things. Amen. Because without a vision, you're going to perish. But what is your vision? Amen. You can have the wrong vision. You can have the wrong perception. Amen. That's why the word has to be rightly divided. Am I with, am I helping someone? Are we together? I need to know that we are together. So our foundation of faith, what do we believe? Who do we believe in? Even, for example, do we believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God? Do we believe that he suffered, bled, and died for us? And on the third day, he got up. Our salvation alone is in that. Amen. Hallelujah. He, that he is the anointed one. He is the Christ. He is king of kings. He's Lord of lords. He's the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. Hallelujah. He suffered, bled, and died for my sins. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, where did I get this information from? You cannot hear unless you hear a preacher. A preacher cannot <laughs> preach unless he was sent. Amen. Hallelujah. That preacher has to first come into his individual responsibility, knowing that God called him to preach this gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. Today, we have motivated speakers Amen. That knows the word of God. That's delivering the word. Amen. And God said, if it was my word, I would have caused them to change. Amen. There's not been much change. Amen. It seems that the world is getting worse and worse. So we have to come into, amen, some true teaching, right? Because people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Those that God called, he, he predestined, right? He foreknew. Amen. He justified. Come on, somebody. Amen. And I know I went all over the place with it, but you understand if you know the word. Amen. And, and they are going to be conformed to the image of the son. Amen. Who is Jesus Christ. And they're going to fulfill their portion of responsibility. Are you guys with me? Amen. So right. I know, amen, my call and my election this morning is sure. I'm called for this. Amen. And a person that has re realized, amen, their original identity, amen, is non-stop, unstoppable. Amen. The gates of hell shall not prevail against them. Remember, he told Peter, he said, who do men say that I am? Amen. He said, some say you this, some say you that. Who do you, who do you say that I am? Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Amen. So in that identity, knowing the people that are playing the key roles in your life, amen, hallelujah, is going to help you to get to victory. Every team need a coach. Are y'all with me? Every team right. needs a coach. I feel God in this thing this morning. Amen. So there has to be a central figure. Amen. From Christ down, there has to be people that play key roles. Even in a household, there's the mother and the father that plays key roles. And then there comes a time that the mother submits to the father. Amen. Hallelujah. Who is the head of the household? Come on. There's central figures, central roles in life. And people have to realize that and not get offended when people start identifying as central figures and God start raising up people within your community and they have a certain, uh, uh, amount of authority or dominion, you can't get offended. Amen. You need to figure out what that person's role is, what their responsibility is, and see how you can help them. What can I do for you? Amen. How can I make your job easier? Amen. Because one thing the Bible says is mark a perfect man. And when you mark him, Amen. The end of that man is peace. Amen. Hallelujah. 
and and then what you do, whatever measure you pour out, it's going to be measured back to you. How you submit to authority. When God began to raise you up, that's how those that God bring under your influence is going to reverence you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's, there's conditions that have to be made. Be holy for I'm holy. Amen. When the righteous are in position, the people rejoice. Amen. When the righteous are in position, the people rejoice. So you have to be righteous. You have to stand. Amen. Hallelujah. In righteousness. You have to make the right choices. Amen. And we talked about before your character. Your character must be in place, right? And then there's there's um numerous indemnities, right? You them and and, and a, a lot of we we as a family, we don't too much like to hear that word because we know what it means. It means that you have to suffer, you have to go through. But I want to tell you that as a family, we have been amen indemnified. We don't owe anything else as far as losing stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. As far as really suffering, because we did that. We paid that debt. Amen. Hallelujah. When it comes after that, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All you have to do, amen, is pay uh, uh what they call it in insurance when 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 you got insurance on this matter, deductible. Amen. All we have to do, Alicia, is pay a deductible. And our deductible, amen, is the minimum. It's like you. You destroy your car and, and it costs $5,000 to get a transmission. Your, your uh, deductible may be only $500. So $5,000, that's not a lot. Come on, somebody. Amen. So 5% responsibility that we have to pay now. Amen. And, and God does the 95%. It's well, y'all got to hear what I'm saying this morning. Amen. Because I'm going to help somebody. Hallelujah. You, you, it ain't a lot. So we, we, there has to be periods of indemnity. There, there's going to be some casualties. There's going to be some people and things that's just not going to go right and get right. So you're going to have to step up and pay that, that um, deductible. Amen. Which is to indemnify the loss. Come on. Because the price been paid. The price was paid with Jesus Christ on Calvary. Come on, but that was for your sins, amen, hallelujah, for your peace, amen, hallelujah, for your transgressions, he was said he's bruised for your iniquity, which is your, your, the condition of your heart, the things that could generate in there, amen, bruised for your iniquity, that he was wounded for your transgressions, that's your sin, he was bruised for your iniquity, the things that may try to generate in your heart, the evil and wicked stuff that you might conjure up. Amen. Hallelujah. And by the stripes, you're healed from sickness and disease. But what about those decisions that we make here on earth? Amen. Like poverty. Amen. You're going to, the poor will be with us always. Amen. But God gives us the power to get well. And that power comes through responsibilities. So it's some things that we're going to have to go through. Amen. And, and in the natural to indemnify those things. Amen to be restored back to that position where we can say I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the lender and not the borrower. Amen. These things come through our obedience. Is everybody with me so far? Am I teaching this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. It's the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. And this, this comes through the foundation of substance. Amen. Hallelujah. Sub, the foundation of substance is directly based on our relationship, amen, with God, amen, hallelujah, because God is always going to be the subject partner, and we are the object partner, we're going to always have to answer to God, amen, even in our communication with each other, it's very, um, it's very imperative, and it, uh, it's imperative, I ain't got to say very, it's imperative that our relationship with God is in order. Amen. There's no, not even a relationship with each other that's authentic until we have solidified our relationship with God. 
Amen. Anything that's not based on legal legality, amen, will not find its permanency in the spirit. Amen. So it has to have a legal right to be there. And that legal right means that God has to stamp it. That's why I said, in all your ways, acknowledge me and I'll do what? I'll direct your path. Learn of me for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So nothing can be done without God, our heavenly parent. Amen. Nothing. Amen. So this, this foundation of substance indemnifies the condition to remove the fallen nature. That's why God sent us his only begotten son. Amen. That's why he sent Jesus. When he could swear by nobody else, he put himself in man. Amen. When the dove couldn't do it. Amen. Hallelujah. When, when, when the burning of the lambs couldn't do it, he said, okay, I'm going to get me a sacrifice. Amen. I'm going to get me a sacrifice. So he put himself in man. Now, uh, we talked about how long this period is going to last. It's going to last until God's will is done, until you realize your purpose, until you realize the plan of God for your life. Amen. And, and understand this, that God's will, amen, hallelujah, is absolute, absolute predestination. God's will shall be done, DeAndre. Amen. No matter if you run to the left, run to the right, that Bishop abuse, you can climb the highest mountain, go to the pit of hell. The will of God is going to be done. Amen. Hallelujah. God's purpose of, 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 of predestination, he says, before I formed you, I knew and I ordained. Amen. Hallelujah. I remember when I first got saved, I, people were telling me God is calling you for this, calling you for that. And I was real sassy. I said, well, I was just wish it just happened. Come on, whatever you're going to do, let him do it. Amen. And I was being smart. And the girl looked at me and she said, if it's the last thing you do, you're going to do what God called and ordained you to do. Amen. Hallelujah. If you do it at the last moment of your life, the last second, you're going to do it. So I just said, Lord, I yield your will. Walk with me, God. Talk with me. Amen. Let your will be done. Amen. And then I was so smart. I said, and God, you, are you going to take me the way I am? Amen. I'm holding on to this. I was bold. Lord, I'll give you this, and I'll give you this, and I'll give you this. But God, this is mine. You know, I was bold like that. Amen. And God, he reminded me later. He said, you gave me that. You gave me that. You gave me that. But you never gave me that. Amen. Hallelujah. And it was hard for me to let go that other thing. Come on, somebody. Amen. But God eventually said, Lord, your will. Amen. Because that thing started whooping me. Amen. I started shedding tears. I started crying. I started laying up at night, staying up at night. Come on. Hallelujah. That thing was giving me a run for my money. So I yielded it to God. That was my disobedience. Amen. And that's how we are. We try to hold on to stuff. Amen. We try to hold on to lifestyles. We try to hold on to conditions and situations. Amen. And God said, just give it to me. Trust me with it. Trust me with your relationships. Trust me with your life. Amen. Hallelujah. God, blessed is the man that make it the Lord his trust. Amen. You don't have to lean on to your own understanding and hold on to that thing. God knows exactly, bless the name of the Lord, what he has planned for you. And his plans are so an amen. Hallelujah. So God's will is absolute. And, and when it comes to us fulfilling God's will, amen, we got to see God's responsibility versus our responsibility. Adding them together is success. Amen. God's going to do his regardless, but we have to make up in our minds that we as humans are going to fulfill our individual responsibility. Amen. And when we do this, amen, hallelujah. We're going to enter, amen, into the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Hallelujah. So I want you to turn your Bibles with me because we're going to read this and we're going to leave 
Amen. Because this has been a great Sabbath. Amen. Psalms 40. We're going to start at verse 1 and we're going to read to verse 8. Amen. And we're going to have Bishop of Butte to pray us out. Hallelujah. And Psalms 40 starts by saying, I waited patiently. Come on, somebody. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he did what? He inclined unto me and he heard my cry. Amen. God turned to me. Amen. Hallelujah. And he heard me. He brought me up. Come on, somebody. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit. Amen. I was in trouble. I was messed up. Amen. I was going in the wrong direction. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I was like David. There was, it seemed to be no hope for me. It seems as though, come on, Bishop, that everything, amen, hallelujah, was coming up against me, that everything was hopeless, but I cried unto God. Come on, Sabbath. Amen. And he heard me and he delivered me out of a horrible place. He delivered me out of a dark place. He delivered me out of miry clay, the miry clay where I was stuck. Amen. Hallelujah. I was almost like them hogs. Amen. You know, they get the rolling in that mud and then they try to slide out and they slip back in. Amen. I was in a slippery place. I kept repeating stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. I kept going back to my vomit. Come on, like a dog. Somebody needs to bless God. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, and he set my feet. Hallelujah. He gave me stability. He set my feet upon a rock and he established my goings. Amen. He established my goings. I was, I was in a pit of destruction. Amen. But he brought me out of that. He brought me out of the sticky mud and he stood me flat footed on a rock. Oh, he gave me stability. He made my feet steady. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. God says he's about to make somebody's feet steady this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. That you won't have any turning in you. Somebody needs to bless God. Not only did he establish it in me and make my foot steady. Amen. DeAndre, he put a song in my mouth. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He put a song in my mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. He even praised unto God. He didn't put that song to make me, hallelujah, say, I don't need nothing. Amen. But God. Amen. That's what he said. He put, Lord, you alone are worthy. Amen. He put songs like, hallelujah, to God be the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I give myself away. Come on, somebody. He put songs of Zion. Hallelujah. He, he thought I was worth the work. I was worth saving. Amen. Hallelujah. So he, he glorified my life. Come on. Hallelujah. This is the songs that of Zion that he placed in our mouth. Come on. Hallelujah. And, and it, it, it said that many shall see it and hear and shall trust the Lord. Amen. Because what he put in my mouth, the testimony, we overcome by our testimony and the blood of the lamb. Because of this testimony, amen, hallelujah, he, he made things right. Not only for me, but they that heard it. He made, it made them rejoice, amen, hallelujah. These songs of praise, many people, hallelujah, will see this and worship God, amen, hallelujah. And they were trusting God. They were trusting the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why we preach the gospel. That's why we sing songs of Zion. That's why we go to the church. He said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves. Amen. That's so that we can encourage each other. And verse four says, blessed is the man that does what? I said that already. Make it the Lord his trust. And does what? And respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Amen. Know them that labor among you. Amen. Hallelujah. When you find a faithful person, amen, a, a happy person, you should be that happy person because you trust in the Lord. So when you trust in God and you're that happy person, amen, hallelujah, you don't look to those that turn aside, amen, hallelujah, 
to be proud. I don't care what position they hold. I don't care how much money they have. Amen. I don't care what authority they're standing in, what political position. Amen. Only the righteous shall see God. Come on. Amen. If you want to follow them to hell, you can do that. But only the righteous shall see God. Amen. Those who worship, amen, false gods, amen, hallelujah. And let me get something straight. Try the spirit to see if it be of God. Amen. I know some people are saying this one is following this one and this one is following that one. God has put central figures in the way of many religions. It's almost like rivers that are flowing to one ocean. If it's your responsibility to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, do it in love. Amen. Do it in love. You can't say, oh, that's a Muslim. They go into hell and you ain't willing to preach the gospel. The Bible said they that have an ear, let them hear what the spirit has to say to the churches. How are you winning souls and you're pointing fingers? Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe they need to hear the gospel. Jesus said, I'm not coming back until the gospel is preached to what? Every nation. Then it shall be called the house of prayer for what? All people. Amen. So we got so caught up in dividing people by their religion or their faith. When you think you know the way, if you know the way and you are anointed to preach this gospel, you can preach this gospel to a dog. Are you with me? You can preach this gospel to, to, to dead bones in the valley because you tell them dead bones arise in Jesus' name. You got it. But if you can't preach to these babies and you can't go anywhere and preach the gospel, you ain't yet arrived to that place. Because when God anoints you, appoints you, and approves you, you can go in the pits of hell like Jesus did and preach the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. So y'all need to get out of that. Amen. Because you're only divided. You're only making it worse. The situation worse. You should be a person that can stand in love and witness in any environment until we all come into the unity of the faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works, which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are in us, are to us word, meaning God, you want good for us. And, and it's been good this far. They cannot be reckoned up in order and unto thee. Meaning you can't even number how good God has been. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Are y'all listening to that? God, you have done so much good to me. You have been good to me. Things that should have killed me things that should have wiped me out, decisions that I could I made that could have, could have ruined my life, ruined my reputation. God, you showed me favor. Your plans, amen, for us are many. You have no respect to persons. God's grace is sufficient for all of us, amen, not just me, not just you, but God's grace is sufficient for those who have not yet come to understand. Hallelujah. And, and, and he said, if I try to even tell everything that you did, amen, there'll be too many. Amen. So why you can't have grace and, 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 and uh, patience, and that's all in love, right? Temperance for those who have not yet come to know what we know. That which we have seen and known, now we're declaring to them that they may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father, the Son, amen, Jesus the Christ, amen. This is done in love. It was through loving kindness that God drew us to the Son. No man can come into the Father unless through the Son, and no man can come into the Son unless the Father first reveals him. Are y'all listening? Amen. So sacrifices and offerings, come on, thou did not desire. Come on. Sacrifice and offering thou did not desire. My ears has thou opened. Burnt offerings and sin offerings thou has not required. So we don't have to slay the lamb anymore. We don't have to put the blood on the door. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Jesus Christ has taken the place of the lamb. Amen. Jesus Christ, the great I am. Hallelujah. God doesn't want these sacrifices. Amen. Hallelujah. God doesn't want, amen, hallelujah, us to, to, to go around and, and do all these, these wonderful things. Amen. He wants us to present our lives, present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto him. Amen. And it's love that covers a multitude of sin. Amen. This is what covers sin. Love, genuine love. Amen. Hallelujah. It's, it's, you have, you, you, it's God, amen, that has made us whole, that we can hear him now, amen, hallelujah, and, and it's God that's going to show that we belong to him, amen, he said, you'll know that they are my disciples by their love, amen, not by how good they could preach, not by how much money they got in their pocket, amen, not by how big their churches are, amen, but you're going to know that they are my disciples by their love. God don't, he don't, all this other stuff y'all doing, God is not even pleased. He's not even looking on that stuff. Amen. He said, lo, I come in the volume of the book is written of me. Amen. I, I delight, amen, to do thy will, O oh God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. This is the place that God is calling. Amen. Hallelujah, that we can look and see, God, I'm written there. I'm in the book. Can y'all say that with me? I'm in the book. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm in the book. I need y'all to hear it. Amen. The book that might not be written because of everything God did, Jesus did, Jesus did. The Bible said the world couldn't even contain the books that was written. You got to begin to testify and say, I'm in the book. My life. Amen. Hallelujah is registered. My name is registered there, the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. So I need to do my part. I need to play my role. Amen. Hallelujah. During this parallel history. Hallelujah. And, and as you do so, you, you're going to, um, as you delight yourself, amen, and, and you delight in his law and you delight in his will. Amen. Hallelujah. He said in nine, I have preached righteousness in the great congregations, and I have not refrained my lips, O oh Lord, and thou knowest. God already know what you do. Amen. He know everything about you, but you got to have this testimony. Amen. That David had. Amen. He said, I'm going to tell about your goodness. Amen. In the great meeting of my people. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell it. No matter where I go, if I go to the highest mountain, if I go to the depths of the deep, I'm going to tell of the goodness of God. I'm going to be a witness. I'm going to be a testimony that our God rules. Our God reigns. He lives. He sits high. He looks low. He's a forgiving God. He's a loving God. He's a saving God. Come on, somebody. Amen. He's merciful. He's kind. He's just. Amen. Hallelujah. He's a good, good father. Amen. He's a wonderful counselor. Hallelujah. He's my prince of peace. Y'all got to hear me. Amen. No matter where I go, I'm going to testify of this God. Amen. Hallelujah. Whether it's on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. Amen. Hallelujah. Facebook Live. I'm going to tell of the goodness of Jesus. Whether I go in the supermarket to the car wash. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Whether I go to the corner store, the deli, the restaurants. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm going to use the opportunity to bless the name of the Lord. I'm going to open up my mouth. Hallelujah. And tell of his goodness. For his goodness endures and his mercy endures forever and ever. Somebody bless God. Somebody bless God. Hallelujah. God is calling you in this season to realize who you are in him and how important you are to him. Amen. And go and tell the world, amen, of his goodness. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's the kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace, and joy. It's nighty, even in your mouth. Amen. The kingdom of God is within you. Amen. And now it's our opportunity to uh, be the first to live within this kingdom on earth. Amen. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. And I'm Apostle Glenda Phillips Lee from the International Gospel of His Church, the African American Clergy Leaders Association. And truly, I'm loving you enough to tell you the truth. Come journey with us. Journey with us to that place 
that God promised he was going to give you. Amen. Bishop Abu, come here all the way from Navasha, Kenya. Amen. I remember coming to Navasha. Amen. Watching the valleys, looking over in Rift Valley, Rift Valley. Amen. And driving into that town. That was the first time the police drove me to the, uh, the police drove us to the police station. We was arrested. <laughs> Amen. But God showed us favor. Amen. And we, we had such a wonderful time in Navash. It was such a beautiful community. It was so clean and nice. Amen. And I'm looking forward to just coming back. Amen. So come on and just pray us out and give God glory if you have any closing remarks. Well, thank you so much, uh, Apostle Mama Africa. That's how we know you uh, down here. Um, I, I'm a testimony, a living testimony for exactly what Mama Africa is saying, Dr. Blender Lee. The first time you visited Kenya and uh, you made your way to Naivasha, uh, we were just a very small family gathering in a room like this office of mine. It had the capacity only to hold about uh, a maximum of 10. And I remember the Holy Ghost drove you to lay your hands upon me and my wife and you spoke very powerfully over my life. By then, I couldn't know what God exactly was speaking. But uh, five years down the line now, I think so, the church has grown to about 100 membership right now. And so I'm here to appreciate the anointing upon your life, Apostle Glenda. I can't take it lightly. I agree with there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of transition along the way, but we can't forget the mark. And then something happened miraculously that that is when I received the invitation to come to New York, Connecticut, I can remember so well, Trumpool Hotel. And uh, we had a very, very wonderful like, two weeks experience with the uh, leadership all across the globe, American pastors, uh, pastors from across Africa. It was my first experience to, to, to touch on the soil of America. America is such a blessed nation. And I'm looking forward again to come there. My visa expired and again, I had to make a new application. And you know what? The American embassy granted me another five years visa. <laughs> but the see of Apostle Mama Glenda, who gave me permission to submit my application using your address. Mm -hmm. So they trust you so much. They know who Apostle Glenda is in America. <laughs> and um, this is a great woman of God. And indeed, I'm so touched by the word of the Lord in the book of Psalms 40, uh, which speaks about waiting upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall mount up wings as eagles. And so I'm so delighted. I'm so happy to see you again all the way from Naivasha, Kenya. I can see Apostle Alicia, may the Lord bless you. <laughs> you know, you are a child of apostles, so you, the apostolic anointing is upon you. You just have to prepare yourself because you are the daughter of apostle. So uh, you apostle beget apostles all across. So prepare for that. So let me just pray because I was called upon to pray. Uh, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you with our heart full of praise and with a lot of humility. This was such a very uh, powerful word through your servant, Apostle Glenda Lee, from the book of Psalms 40, which teaches us the importance of waiting upon the Lord and indeed who God is to us. He's a father. He's so caring, he's so loving. 
is our savior. When we call on him, he listens, he comes. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 33, verses 3, that call unto me and I will hear and answer. And so, Father, we are here to say thank you for touching our lives with that powerful word of God. Thank you so much for using this great woman of God, Mama Africa. Thank you so much for making her a blessing to the body of Christ. Father, we are here to say thank you for the gift that you have laid upon her life. Thank you for using her to touch us, to transform our lives. Many years, about, about seven years ago, we were people that nobody knew anything good could come out of us. But because of using this great woman of God, the spirit which was in her made us people who are very now respectable in the society. Father, we say thank you as we ask you that you continue pouring your grace upon her life and in the ministry where she's leading as she touches life across Africa, America. Lord, we say thank you. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and also believe. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Thank you so much, Mama Africa, Dr. Lee, Glenda Lee. We love you so much. We are here waiting, looking forward to receive you this, uh, next time when you visit. Please, this is your home. Uh, nothing can hinder you because you have played a very, very, very important, important role. I am one person who can never forget what the Lord did through your life to transform our lives in Naivasha. So you're most welcome. Nairobi is, is welcoming you. As you continue praying for Kenya, there's a lot of chaos in the streets every Mondays and every Thursdays. People are losing property. Um, people are also losing lives. Uh, so uh, pray for Kenya and pray for the peace of Kenya. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless God. One, I want you to know that you are an agent that could bring about change also. Amen. And all you have to do is speak to the situation in Kenya. What God is doing, there are influencers that are on the ground that is very powerful. There are agents for God that are on the ground that's very powerful. And they have to be willing to speak truth to power. Amen. Those that are in the political arena really don't have the authority that they think they have, amen? Because God is the one that raises up leaders, amen? Hallelujah. So the authority that God has given you to uh, make a difference, begin to utilize that authority. And no weapon that's formed against you will be able to prosper. It's, it's righteousness that, that exalts a nation. Amen. Hallelujah. It's righteousness that exalts a nation. And you can start by just praying. Amen. Just having a prayer group, a prayer camp. Amen. One thing God does. Amen. He moves by his spirit, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen. I've, I've spoken some very powerful things over Kenya, especially the election. Amen. I call the election. Hallelujah. Um, I, I called the, um, the when, when they sold out to these, these that are reckon have it now, amen, because of decisions that leaders made, right? Leaders made these decisions. Church leaders made these decisions with, for money, right? Nobody knew, but now it's become payday. So it's things behind the scenes. That, that took place that a lot of people that's um, in the community don't know about, amen. No curse come without a cause, amen. So don't think things just happen. It never just happens, amen. It's a reason behind the reason, amen. So you be encouraged and you stand when you've done all to stand and allow the spirit of God to manifest itself. Kenya will not be destroyed. It will not be divided in the name of Jesus because God already have a people that's going to stand for righteousness. Amen. Hallelujah. There's going to be a lot of people that's going to be exposed in this season. Amen. Hallelujah. 
And, and, and one thing, when it's, it's almost like um, Joseph, amen, when Joseph's brothers tried to destroy him, amen, Joseph was able to come back and said, y'all did me nothing because it was God that sent me before you to preserve posterity in the land and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So that's where, what we were talking about today, that, that central figure, amen, those, those providential leaders that shall rise in this season to bring about deliverance. And they are under great persecution, amen. They're like you stated, they're, they're nobodies to the somebodies, you know, the quote unquote somebody. But in reality, they're somebody to God and God has already set them up to bring about uh, revival and restoration to that nation, amen? So when you see a good man, mark that man. When you see righteousness, that's who you flow with. You don't flow with, with all this corruption. And I told you guys, I remember the, um, the election maybe four years ago or five years, four years ago, maybe three years ago. I don't remember. It wasn't the last election, the election before that. I said, we don't discuss election in this platform, amen? We don't discuss it on this platform among the church. Amen. And that kept us together. It broke a few people off, but that's something that you don't do. You only look at the heart of people. Amen. You don't judge your situation about who's it because of who's in the political position. Amen. So we thank God. We thank God for everything he's doing. I want to say good night to those of y'all who are listening, those who have joined us on on TikTok, those who are joining us, amen, in um, other parts of the world. We have some things that's on the altar. Please pray, pray um, for all of us, amen. Hallelujah, the enemy has come up with some health scares. We need to pray against these health scares, amen, on me and on some leaders, amen, within the organization, some friends that's connected to the ministry. We need to pray against these things. We know what the word of God says. He forgives our sins and heals all of our diseases. Amen. By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. So we are walking in this word. Amen. But it takes us to all come into the unity of the faith. Amen. Knowing together what the will of God is for our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. So stay in the boat, stay with God and stay with prayer. And I'll see you all tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. I want to say happy birthday to my wonderful grandson. Amen. Hallelujah. Happy birthday, uh, Andre. Mima, I love you so much. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm proud to see you growing to be such a great, nice, anointed young man. I can't wait to you walk in these things. He said when he's, he's grown, he's going to build a church in North Korea. Amen. He said that at three years old, that's a big responsibility, Dion, I mean, Andre, but I know you could do it because I know by that time, there's going to be unification of North and South Korea. Amen. And you're going to put your church there. Hallelujah. Because your mama and your grandmama, hallelujah, stood at the DMZ and interceded, hallelujah, for that nation. And the reward is going to be that my grandson put a church in that region that's going to glorify God. Somebody needs to bless God. I believe God for that. I'm bold enough to believe God, hallelujah, that every trip that I made to Korea, amen, hallelujah, and Pyongyang, I'm, that it was for the generation that's going to come and set up an altar, hallelujah, in North Korea, amen, hallelujah. I know you, you, you know what I'm talking about. So we bless God, and I thank God again for each of you. Enjoy your day. Happy Sabbath. What a wonderful Sabbath we have had. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Don't forget to send in your tithes and send in your offering. Amen. Hallelujah.